You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something about one of the gaming drag today. I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Route 65. So yeah, I'll save all the Patreon stuff for the end of the video. Let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. There we go. Alrighty. Apparently there's a party happening tonight. Carl raises an inquisitive brow. Like, here or in general? I'm not sure what you mean by in general, but yeah, around here in Echo. TJ got invited. I'm guessing it's, I'm guessing it's uh, for a Day of the Dead. What? He didn't mention it to me at all. And I asked him to ask him to his face if he was doing anything tonight. I shrug. Well, you aren't really the type for social events. Carl shifts upon his hooves, his posture faltering. Yeah, but it is weird that he wouldn't mention it. That sounds about like the most exciting thing that will happen around here for months. Carl looks off to the side, shifting his posture some. I'd rather just stay home and play virtue with you anyway. But seriously, a party in Echo? Can't be for some churchy thing in this land of heathens. It's... well, it's at the Parsons Manufacturing Building on Route 65. That's sort of the... That's sort of the ass end of nowhere for a party, too. Maybe it's like a rave or something. The mental image of TJ and Neon Hot Pants with glow sticks and a rave whistle comes to I'm just gonna do the regular voices. Which is weirdly kind of hot. Yeah, I don't think TJ is the trance and techno type. Maybe he just wants to get his. That satisfaction, satisfaction. Carl says this in a robotic tone. He smiles, his eyes half-lidded. I groan. I think we should go. Carl blinks, his expression akin to as if I just asked to rub his horns. Dude! He lets out a little huff, rubbing the back of his head. First of all, this is a TJ party we're talking about. Second, it's the middle of nowhere. Third, isn't Day of the Dead for like... He pulls his paw away from his beanie long enough to swirl it around in gesticulation as he tries to tries to phrase this right. Latin folk? My blood's as my blood's as apple pie as it gets, dude. All right, first we can play your handheld if it turns out to be boring and religious. But the idea of trying to come out to TJ amongst the fundy Christian crowd is a nightmare. Second, we live in the middle of nowhere. Anything local happening is technically in the middle of nowhere, which still doesn't make it any more safe. Third, well, I don't know. I assume nothing too culturally sensitive is taking place in an abandoned factory, which won't save us from sticking out like a sore thumb, including TJ. Carl exhales, though, through flowered nostrils, lolling his head up as if throttled by how much of a bad idea this is. Dude! He looks back at me, a top frown upon his muzzle. I don't know, I guess I'm kind of curious. Worst case, we stop in, smack TJ around, then make like Flynn's, like Flynn's fetish and scat. Oh, God. Best case, we stop in, smack TJ around, they have food. I'd rip your tail off for a cheese quesadilla right now. Don't do that. There you go. I finally stole my phone in my pocket. You think Flynn actually is into the, that sort of thing, or that's just a running joke? I mean, you mentioned his cloaca or whatever near daily. Dude, he's totally into that. I bet he's one of those septic, septic suckers. Every fiber of my being does not want to know what that is. I give Carl a repulsed look. I read about it on the image boards. You know, septic tank. You know septic tanks, right? Stop right there. They drill holes in people's tanks while they aren't home and lower a rope down through... Carl? And they climb down. The solid breaking stuff in the tanks makes everything super sticky. So they literally stick to the tank walls like a suction cup. Jesus fucking Christ! And they take this chisel and use their tongue on the... Carl, I'm going to beat your ass. Honestly, that sounds more favorable than going to a church party. Carl puts on a look of casual deadpan. Meanwhile, I'm trying not to gag up my macaroni salad from lunch. I don't think it's a church thing. Eh, yeah, neither do I. Alright, I'll go with you. Carl lets out a brief breath and bit of laughter before pulling out his, pulling out his phone. Like your parents show? Ugh. Yep, your fault too. What should I say? Truth? Maybe? You know what? I'm really 16 and it's Friday. My folks keep saying I need to be social, so... Carl texts something into his phone before moving along the opposite direction we were walking before. Let's see... Getting in at my house. Carl texts something into his phone... That's your... Okay. 
I'm honestly surprised he accepted. His social anxiety is pretty bad. It's pretty bad at school. Maybe it's just that kind of night. I follow suit and walk alongside Carl. Can't wait till I get my license and car. I mentioned that already, yeah? Route 65 is like three miles away. You get your fetlocks toned and ready for the dance floor, though. I see Carl's posture stiffen some at that prospect, his bright green eyes looking to the asphalt beneath us. You don't actually think there's gonna be dancing, is there? Like the movies and shit? I shrug. Something I've been doing a lot this night. Growing up in a town with less than 60 people has made it look has made what looks like a conventional teenage experience on TV seem utterly foreign. The closest our group of friends had to such had to such were par had to such were birthday parties it was just blah. A group of our friends had to such I can't speak right now, y'all, it's late. The closest our group of friends had to such were birthday parties with just us six and our folks. There we go. Leo's dad let us drink a can of beer once. I always imagined high school parties were just a bunch of kids sitting on couches and smoking weed. But this is Echo, so... Meth? Do you think TJ would go to a party where everyone smoked meth? I don't think TJ would go to a party that didn't have a crucified Jesus statue watching over the attendees. I dip my paws in my pockets as we walk. Hang on. Hmm. <laughs> Meanwhile, Leah was out driving around with his new friends and going to actual Peyton parties, probably. The way I see it, most people don't actually play football for the game in high school. It's all about, like, the status. I grunt to the affirmative, biting my tongue for a moment before speaking. I wonder if Leah thinks we're not cool. Carl actually turns to look at me, then quickly averts his gaze to the ground. Dude! I think that after all the shit we've been through, that wouldn't matter. A serious statement from him takes me off guard, and I feel instantly guilty for broaching that topic. I nod solemnly, another long pause drifting between us. Yeah. Carl tells me more about 3D Virtue Chat, some girls he met there, on a, he met there as we walk. Girls being stated with quotation fingers each time. I tried talking with guys online myself, though, like Carl, I'd never with my real identity. I remember I was feeling lonely two months ago and posted a personal m and m ad on the patent list website. 18-year-old Otter here looking for friend mentor was the tagline. I included a cropped and photoshopped picture of myself at the Peyton Rec Center pool, my face blurred. As I went through the puberty a couple of years ago, I was pretty sure I could pass for 18 and my face was hidden. I was wrong. My post was taken down and I got a few emails from administrators asking all sorts of questions. It really hasn't been my best past few months. Eventually we reached the Parsons Building, an establishment that closed many of my lifetimes ago from the looks of it. About ten or so cars and motorcycles are parked alongside the building, and neon blue light emanates from the inside. The thump of bass is palpable even out here on the road. I look over to Carl. All his lackadaisy demeanor on the way here has been replaced by tilt by tight lipped tension. To be honest, I'm feeling pretty similar. This does not look like a Christ camp affair. I don't see anyone outside here. Maybe everyone's inside. Carl shrugs. Maybe. We just got it. We just got to get in and look for TJ's uh, TJ's little gray ass. Or, you know, his face. Any idea what uh, we should say when we see him? Hi, TJ. Is a good start. Okay, sounds good. Cool. Another of us moves. God, dude, what if it's a rave? Do people actually still have raves? I don't know, but I'm getting really bad vampire cult vibes from all this. Let's check around the back first, alright? Boo! Ah, what the fuck? Carl practically leaps, swatting at the air around him as he gets some distance. Hi, guys! Oh, jeez, I'm sorry, Carl. I didn't know I'd scare you that badly. You shouldn't use those kinds of words, though. Carl stares wide out at the sheeted visage before his, his eyes go to a lull. Ugh. Hey, TJ. I legitimately thought you were about to start bleeding there, Carl. Real speciesist, dude. What's up, TJ? Why are you dressed like a ghost? My mom dropped me off about two minutes ago, but she had to go pick up something for Dad and left. I can't believe you guys walked here. And Mom would have given you a ride if you asked. Not that I'm against you guys getting exercise or anything. <laughs> I think Carl winces slightly. As for the costume, my mom and I put this together at the last minute. I didn't get to go trick or treating yesterday because of the church stuff, so Mom said now would be a good chance to do a good chance with my would be my chance with this party. Even under all that fabric, I'd still picture TJ grinning cheerily. Such a contrast to the past few hours with Carl. A contrast to this whole day, actually. It's very considerate of your mother, TJ, but, um, never mind. How'd you get invited to this, but not us? TJ cocks his ghostly head curiously to the side. 
My mom just told me she heard about this fun get-together here and said it would be a good way to treat myself after volunteering yesterday. I didn't really think I needed one. There's a pause. Oh gosh, I never, I've never crashed a party before. Should we just go home? Carl and I exchange a look. I'm about to speak when TJ quickly interjects. I, I, thought, I thought I saw Leo here when my mom pulled up, actually. He was by the parking lot with someone else, but, I, but when I got out, I couldn't find him. That's weird. He didn't mention anything about going to, the, going to it this tonight, so it surprised me. Well, he didn't tell me about this either. I see TJ shift beneath his costume. It was short notice, and I didn't think you'd have a costume or anything, or would want to come. Graham holds up the flat of his paws to the, to the sheeted one. To the sheeted one. It's fine, TJ, I get it. Carl steps off the road and onto the smooth concrete of the entranceway, trying to get a stealthy look inside the side from afar. I mean, it's okay to have a plus one if Leo's here, right? Uh, but there are three of us. See Leo in there, Carl? Carl is silent for a long moment. I see Jack. Who? Carl looks back to me. Jack shit, you might know him. I throw my brow at Carl. TJ physically covers his ears with his enshrouded paws. I hear the lynx mutter a faint stop. Is it weird that we've been out here this whole time and no one has come outside? I'd like, I'd assume people would want to come out here for air or to smoke and uh, make out. Now, I'd be doing that inside. What? TJ's eyes bulge. What kind of party is this? TJ brings his paws together, wringing them as he looks up, looks at us expectantly. We don't know, TJ. I kind of hope that you would. A uh, sort that Leo and TJ go to without inviting or even telling us about, apparently. Bitterness still hangs in Carl's tone as he rocks nervously upon his hooves. I'm honestly still upset about it myself, too. This is the sort of thing I'd like, to, I'd like us all to do together, our first real party as a group. I don't feel nearly as confident without, without at least Leo with us. And by the way TJ and Carl are acting, I think it's the same for them, too. I suppose Leo just has that effect on people. Nope. Oh god. How in the hell am I even getting bars out here? Fuck this. I hit ignore and walk past Carl toward the blinding cyan light of the broken entryway. Dude, wait! Chase! I step inside and I'm instantly greeted with the musty smell of dozens of years of structural decay. The scent of dust, drywall, and stray fiberglass insula insulation mixes with the more modern aromas of alcohol, perfume, and hot wax. Looking around, there are actually quite a few lit candles lying about. The flames contrasting with the color with the colored gel matted hot, colored gel matted halogen lighting. I percent this up must be a theater tech kid. With all the candles, I actually agree, agree with Carl's notion. This is a bit vampire culty feeling. The music certainly isn't helping. I expected something a lot more. I don't know. Leo calls it oompa oompa music. Uh, the stuff with trumpets and accordations we get on the Spanish stations. Still no sign of anyone. This is actually getting kind of spooky. Hey, wait up, Chase! TJ and Carl come bounding in behind me. The acoustics in here are nuts! Why is it empty? I don't know. I don't hear anyone yet. And that's weird. Well... Let's put up, gang, and search for clues. TJ and I both look over at Carl, who has a flat expression on his face. I'm joking. I'm literally fine with us holding, t holding, ta holding tails chain style at this point. I am okay with just walking normally. With that, TJ steps up. Following in tow, we walk around the corner through a cobwebbed hallway and into the main manufacturing floor. Here we finally see some people. It's certainly no rave. I count only about 15 or so people at the far end of the room and a few more in the rooms behind them. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe work contents as little as $5. <sighs> Alright, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye!